All right, you guys. First impression Friday. We are here to take a look at some sewing patterns. Today we're going to be taking a look at Hubbading. Pretty sure that's how you pronounce that. And it has the cutest little story behind the name. Hubba ding ding, sister, you've got everything. That's what my papa used to say when one of his granddaughters was wearing a super snazzy outfit. It's silly, but damn, it made us feel good. And that's how I want you to feel in your new me made creations. So you might not have heard of Hubba Ding before, but this is what came up when I searched for if Kim wore clothes, um, which was suggested to me as a pattern company to review. So you might, <coughs> you might know that pattern company and not have known that they changed names. But because she says, I'm Kim, that makes me think that it was the same. And at some point, she changed. Maybe if Kim wore clothes was her blog. And then when she started drafting patterns and selling them, she became Hubba Ding. Either way, she says, Hubba Ding is all about making super simple but beautiful clothing at home. The patterns are designed to be beginner friendly. So you won't spend hours and hours laboring over a sewing machine. But you will end up with a garment that you will be so proud of. Um, and if you can't tell already, this pattern company has just a ton of personality. And I imagine that um, when you're going through the instructions or the video tutorials, all of that would come through as well. I kind of love this, like, download your PDF pattern, choose your fabrics, assemble your new pattern, go sew, pedal it out, um, which is like a, a cycling term, like on a like Peloton, right? Don't anybody Peloton out there? Isn't that what they say? Like pedal it out. Isn't that a thing? Maybe not. Um, okay. So then there's some reviews here. There's their Instagram. All right. <coughs> Sorry. I've still got this little baby cough, um, uh, that happens to be worse whenever I start speaking. Um, so hopefully it won't be too annoying for you guys, but, um, also maybe it'll go away, which would be nice. Um, Okay, so we have, and I'm just trying to make sure that we're seeing the same thing here because we do have an Etsy page as well, and I don't fully understand why brands have e-commerce as well as Etsy, so I just wanted to make sure that everything was the same, which it does not look like that's the case, but maybe, I don't know. It's really hard to tell. And then the price is here. This one says $11.50, but these are $8.25. Um, so I'm not, again, entirely sure what the difference is, but if you like any of these patterns, maybe go compare them to what is available on Etsy and maybe get like a better deal. I don't know. But we're going to look at what's available on the website. It's starting with the Courtney dress. She says, firstly, I'm so sorry. I don't have any pictures of the dress modeled on a person. We're in lockdown in New Zealand at the moment, so I can't take any proper pictures. Can I, can we talk about how she uses like texting language? I really like that as a millennial. I can see why maybe some of you wouldn't, <laughs> but I think it makes it also very clear as to who she's designing for. Uh, maybe like a younger sewist, maybe someone who, I don't know, would just know that ATM is at the moment. <laughs> um, so I can't take any proper pictures, but as soon as we're allowed out of the house, I'll get onto it. The Courtney dress is a loose fitting dress. The bodice buttons up, the bodice, the bodice buttons up down the front, has drop shoulders and poofy sleeves that are elasticated at the wrists. The skirt has two gathered tiers and falls to just above the knee. My patterns are designed to be super easy for novice sewers. It comes with step-by-step -step sewing instructions in plain language with pictures so you don't get bamboozled with complicated sewing language. And if you don't understand anything, you can get in contact with me and I'll explain further. Wow, that's very generous. Uh, pattern includes size 6 to 24. These are New Zealand sizes. However, the instructions include a sizing chart that you can figure out which is the best size for you if you're not familiar with New Zealand sizing. Um, the size chart is also shown in the second to last picture. Okay, let's go to that. I don't mind that she doesn't have them modeled on a model. She has them modeled on a person herself. I'm totally fine with that. I don't care that this is in your apartment. Like I can see it on a body, see the ease. So I don't know that she should be apologizing for that. You know what I mean? 
Oh, jeez, biscuit. Please leave that alone. Um, okay, so here we go. So this is, as she explains it, a button front bodice, but it only goes to the empire waist. From there, there's a tier, and then there's another tier at maybe the high hip, and then it's knee length. And then you have these very generous sleeves with elastic casings. Super cute design. I love this so much. Um, this looks like to be made out of kind of like a linen maybe, or like a cotton blend. You can see the facing in here as well. Yeah, she's totally making it work considering what is going on in the world right now and everyone being on lockdown. I do not have any negative feelings toward those photos of the garment. Okay, I my my most universal gripe that I have about these indie sewing patterns is that the pictures don't get bigger. So I can't zoom in on this at all and really like easily see the numbers. And I'm imagining you guys are having the same issue too. But... This is, okay, it looks like size six has a, this is body measurements, a 30, 31 and a half inch bust up to 24. Now, didn't she say that it went up to 20? Yeah, no, 24. Okay, so 31 and a half up to 48 in the bust. And then the body measurement hip goes from 34.6 up to 50. So, not bad at all in terms of size inclusivity. Not the best I've seen. Uh, probably not what the plus size sewing community would deem um, appropriate or acceptable. But again, not the absolute worst I've seen either. This would cover, you know, obviously a lot of your, the smaller straight size girls. Also, a lot of mid size girls would fit in here too. Um, it just really kind of leaves out anyone who is in that plus size category. That to say, this particular garment is very generous in uh, design ease. So your uh, bust goes up to 54.3 inches and the hip goes up to 71.7 inches. I think that's a one. Really hard to tell. 71, 72 inches. Um, just because it's such a roomy, roomy dress. Um, let's see it back on her again. So you can see here. Roomy in the bust, roomy in the waist, roomy in the hip. So, but that's sizing. That's sizing for them. Fabric requirements. Uh, works well with light to medium weight woven fabrics with good drape. Try cotton, linen, rayon, or viscose. Um, yardage requirements. You'll also need elastic and buttons. <clears throat> and then here's what your file comes with instructions, the AO size pattern, A4, as well as letter size. So you can do it with yeah, at home or you can send it off as well. Um, the instructions include dimensions for the regular pattern pieces. So you don't have to print out all the pages. So that's really interesting. So because we have like Basically, this piece here is a rectangle. This piece here is a rectangle. So instead of just, you know, printing out giant rectangles and taping them all together, she says, cut out a pattern piece that's, you know, 13 inches by 8 inches or whatever it is. And then you just draft your own rectangle. So that's thoughtful. That's very thoughtful. So that's the Courtney dress. I like it. I like it a lot. Here is the Annie dress. Again, the same apology about the models, but the Annie dress has raglan sleeves that gather into elasticated cuffs, very similar to the Courtney dress that we just looked at, except this one has raglan sleeves instead of the set-in sleeve. Raglan sleeves are like a million times easier to sew for beginners than a set-in sleeve would. Or I should say, well, I mean, it is set-in. That sleeve, that Courtney dress had a bit of a drop shoulder, so your sleeve pattern piece looks a lot less like a bell and is easier to sew in the round because it's down here and it's got less of like a slope for the shoulder. So I guess in order, the shoulder, fit shoulder um, set in sleeve is the hardest then is the drop shoulder sleeve, then is the raglan sleeve in terms of difficulty. Um, all right, elasticated cuffs to make them perfectly poofy. The neckline is gathered and ties up into a bow in the back. A peplum sits between the bodice and the skirt and a ruffle frames the hem of the dress. This is very like 
the the body of this feels very like flapper 40s to me um and then all of this information is the same good drape light to medium weight cotton linen rayon or viscose is the same for the fabric requirements i think she used something pretty drapey yeah i wouldn't be surprised if this were like <clears throat> silky print polyester something along those lines um I do, I, you know, I get that she's trying to like make it as artsy as possible, but I do not like how half of the skirt is being blocked by the sofa. Yeah, I mean, I would have preferred, you know, I, I know the pictures are boring when you just stand straight in front of them and probably she feels a little bit awkward like being her own model, but for us to be able to see everything, like I want to see how long this sleeve is. I want to see you know, what the ease in everything is when she's standing up straight, not when she's like kind of half bent over. And you can't see the neckline when her head is down. So, I mean, I get that the other pictures are like boring, but in terms of a buyer and me deciding whether I'm going to purchase this or not, I do prefer the more boring, boring pictures. But it's a really cute design for sure. Love this little detail. I don't think there's any closures on this. You don't need any buttons or zippers or anything. Um, but it is a very um, straight design. Like, you are not going to see a waist. You are not going to see a hip. It's just going to be, like, very tent-like. So, the lighter weight fabrics, I think, are better because they fall closer to the body. But you could also make a really great statement with you know, the more structured fabrics as well, just depending on your personal style. But I mean, I could see this out of a shirting, the little ruffle peplum might be a little bit funky, but you could always leave that part off and <laughs> just leave the skirt one. All right, that's Annie. Next we have Charlie. Charlie is a classic smock dress. The bodice has a gathered, I'm sorry, has a rounded neckline and short sleeves. The gathered skirt falls from below the bust to mid shin. My patterns are just, okay, great. So simple little bodice here, uh, rounded neckline, short sleeves, empire waist in a gathered skirt. Oh, I see. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Again, very roomy, very um, generous with the ease. I just prefer pictures like that a lot better. Again, I know that they're like really boring, but when I'm looking to buy, it's much easier for me to tell what's going on here than when she's like, you know, trying to like create a pose or whatever. Like I can see how wide the neckline is. I can see how low it is. Um, it does look like she wore some kind of other dress under this one because her fabric was sheer. Um, so don't think that that little piece comes with it. I don't think it does. But <laughs> you can see the wider sleeve um, it goes to the elbow. Um, and this is actually falling a lot closer to her waist than it seemed with the illustration. Yeah, some funky punkers with the sewing here. And also you can tell when you use a more structured fabric how this all pulls away from your body a lot more. So it looks like the dress is like coming away from her body a lot. Um, but that's just the fabric. <clears throat> All right, there's Charlie. Let's make sure nothing. So light, medium weight, cotton, linen, rayon, or viscose. Again, same fabric requirements. I kind of like that in an indie pattern because, you know, I always suggest that people like pick one pattern company and sew exclusively from them for a while to help you figure out fit. Um, and I think fabrication plays a big role in that as well. If you're buying from the same pattern company and they are largely using the same types of fabrics. It's almost like you don't have to think about that element of sewing. Um, you can just do your thing and know that, you know, this category of fabrics are going to work for all their patterns. Okay. So here's the Is Isabella top, uh, loose fitting top with billowing sleeves that are cuffed on the forearm here. The top has dropped shoulders and a peplum around the hem and a high neckline that ties up in the back for a cute little bow. 
So this is a really cute design. Again, this is the drop shoulder sleeve and then the sleeve is actually set in with gathers. So again, really easy. If you get some puckers, it looks intentional. Um, and then it all comes into this little doodad here, which I think is finished off with bias binding. That can be a little bit tricky, but nothing you couldn't overcome. And then more gathers with your peplum and it looks like your bias bound neckline. So here's the top. I love the sleeve so much. I love the peplum. I love the length. I think she nailed the design on this, especially she looks petite to me. So especially on her proportions, I feel like she got a really, really good fit that, um, that was probably exactly how she intended it. I don't think this is supposed to be like a low hip situation and it's not on her, which is wonderful. <clears throat> So again, she's just standing in front of a curtain. I don't care. I like it. I can see everything that's going on. I only wish I could make these pictures larger, but I can't. So, so yeah, super cute, super straightforward little pattern with a lot. It's like a basic with a really big twist, like a spiral corkscrew triple axle type of <laughs> twist, but I really, really, really like it. You could do so much with fabric here. Like she just probably used like a cotton shirting, but imagine this in like a solid cotton shirting and then the sleeve and the peplum out of like a lace or an eyelet or something like that would be so fun. <laughs> okay, Julia. Oh, Julia's giving me nightgown vibes. Uh, drop shoulder dress with poofy sleeves, same design, right? So once you've learned the drop shoulder with the gathered sleeve and the cuff, once you did it once with the shirt in the last pattern, you can do it again. Um, the bodice crosses over slightly at the front and a billowy skirt falls to just below mid shin. Two little pen tucks frame the hem of the dress. Such a sweet detail. So a surplus bodice, <clears throat> your dress, like the, the, I don't know, like, I don't want to call that a waist seam, but like the seam of the dress I don't know looks like it might be cutting I don't know if this is long enough this looks like it's cutting her off in like a weird place but and then again when you go here it does look like too like it's not baby doll and it's not empire it's like somewhere in the middle which I'm not sure I love that <clears throat> but then you've got your same even uh, uh I would say this does have a deeper dropped shoulder than the last pattern. That could also be though, because the sleeves are pulling this bodice open a little bit more. And so it's falling lower. Hard to tell without seeing the patterns, but you can see the little pin tuck hem. So cute. And I think maybe it looks a lot like, I mean, like a judge's robe, a nightgown, a graduation <laughs> gown, maybe because she sewed it in white. Um, I don't know if other colors like citron, pink, you know, stuff like that would look better or worse. Or if that's just like the design and if you like it, just lean into that a little bit and be like, yeah, here's my judge's robe and what? <laughs> so that one's really cute. Probably recommends the same fabric. Yep. Perfect. Cute, cute. All right. That's Julia. Here's the Sophie dress and top. So again, this is very kind of like the last one, you know, nods to Victorian era. Um, it's probably going to feel a little bit pajama-y when we get to the modeled version. But Sophie can be made as either a top or a dress. Both options have a gathered neckline that ties up into a bow at the front. Raglan sleeves that gather into, um, that gather above the cuff and buttons down the front. So Full button placket plus a little, it's like a pussy bow uh, blouse with your raglan sleeve. <clears throat> and then here's the dress version. The exact same thing everywhere, just longer. And then here she is wearing the top. Simple black. Here's the dress version. I kind of love the dress version, especially with her like Doc Martens or whatever those are. Um... The shirt, you know, you're probably thinking, man, she should tuck that in. But I don't know if that would be better or worse. Uh, 
I really like the black version. And I think too, if you made it out of something that like wasn't as harsh of a fabric, like if you made it out of an eyelet or if you made it out of something with a little bit of, uh, I don't know, detail to it, not a print. I think a print would be a lot for all these gathers that are going on, but a solid with some kind of detail, it might take it away from this, like, like in some ways it looks childish, in some ways it looks clownish, but I think with like a still solid fabric with some detail that maybe, maybe is a little bit more lightweight than this one, I think would be really pretty. But I do love the black version so much. Where's the front picture of the black one? Yeah, I think that is so cute. Gotta be comfortable, right? I mean, geez. Um, you could also even play around because this is a raglan. You could make this out of a solid and then again, do your sleeves out of something, you know, a little bit more sheer. Super cool. You know, they're doing all those like mesh sleeves. Uh, maybe with the pearls on it, you know what I mean? Little thing or embroidered something or another would be really cute. Something along those lines. But I like the dress version more than the top, which is, I guess I kind of surprised myself with that. <clears throat> okay, next, Bethany. And finally, we have a little bit of shape going on here. The Bethany dress is a classic wrap dress with billowy sleeves that are elasticated at the cuff. The skirt falls from waist to mid shin, but can be hemmed to whatever length you like. Yes, obviously. So we have the surplus bodice, I think, or is this a true wrap dress? In which case, it's not surplus. This is, there's, she said there's a seam here, but I don't, but I think you get into this by undoing all of this. There just happens to be a skirt seam. Okay, and there's also some darts here. That's what, or some pleats. That's what gives you your room for your bust. This is like a full-on set on sleeve with no gathers or anything. The more, most difficult of all the sleeves. Also, this whole thing is finished on bias binding. I would be super, super curious to know um, technically how she's instructing people to do this because this is the bias. This will stretch out if you don't reinforce this with interfacing or something else. Um, so that would make me curious. We have the same little lantern sleeve that she has shown before. Um, you have your seam here, which she says falls from waist, but clearly this is the waist. This is a little bit higher than the waist. So maybe it's the illustration. I'm not sure, but, um, could be a little bit high waisted of a skirt and then also sort of fitted. Okay. Not entirely how the illustration looks, but still not something I don't like. <laughs> Does that make sense? I actually, oh man, I can't tell what is happening with the wrap here. Like the wrap is clearly going this way. Where's the skirt overlap? Is this the skirt overlap? Yeah, I'm confused. Maybe this, mm, but then you couldn't get into it. I don't know what's happening. But you can see that this is wrapping around the back of her body. There's a tie sewn onto this somewhere, which is coming around. So then the skirt, gosh, I want bigger pictures. The skirt comes, maybe the skirt, the end of the, the edge of the skirt doesn't match up with the end of the bodice. Maybe that's what's happening. Can't see anything here, but okay. Looking past that, which is, you know, kind of hard for me to do, but I will try. The fit here looks really good. Obviously the waist, the little tie helps cinch in a lot of stuff, but even the fit through here looks good. It's got a nice grade to it. The length is really nice. <clears throat> the sleeve is great. Um, and this is a higher, like it crosses over higher. Now, I don't know if that is the pattern or how she has it tied on herself. You can obviously wrap a wrap dress tighter and that would make the neckline hi <clears throat> higher. The reason why I think that that might not be the case is because this seam line here is still going underneath her bust. 
if it were the other way around where you're trying to tie it tighter than it was supposed to, this would come over your bust. <clears throat> so it might be a little bit of both in this picture. Like this might just be a little bit bigger than she intended. And so she's tying it a little bit tighter to give it that cinched in look that she was going for. So just something to keep in mind when you're making this pattern is to just check the ease of the bust. The length of it looks great. The length of the um, bodice does come down to the waist, not like it is here, you know. And it does appear that this is supposed to all be in one line, but I don't really know if I can trust the illustrations that much because they don't seem to match up with the finished garment that much. And again, it, maybe it's this plaid, maybe it's the fact that the pictures are smaller, but it does seem like this is being wrapped around a bunch. So, and, and for some reason the skirt is not, I, it's really hard to see. Um, so take all that for what it's worth. <laughs> um, next, Edie top. Look how fun this one is. This is right at my alley. Loosely fitted top with drop shoulders and a ruffle sitting between the bodice and the sleeve. The sleeve is mid-length and the top is slightly cropped, falling to the waist. So, exactly how she describes. We've seen a bunch of patterns like this from indie folks where you've got the little ruffle in the sleeve. Um, so, there's lots of options. This one happens to be cropped with a really big sleeve. You can see that here. Um, but I still think it's super cute. I kind of like the oversized sleeve a little bit. And the cropped length, I don't know necessarily that I would call that cropped. Um, it is falling a little bit below her waistline. So, yeah, it's just a little bit shorter of a length. But I still think it's falling, like, either at or really close to her high hip, which to me isn't cropped. It's just shorter than most. <laughs> But the pictures are really good. I love it in this little sheer fabric that she did. And she's wearing a little tank top underneath it. Obviously, you could go even drapier with the fabric. And you wouldn't have it stick out like a box like this. Um, it would kind of fall into your body a little bit more. But I love that she accentuated that. <clears throat> All right. That's the ED top. 6 to 24. Same fabric requirements across the board. So that makes it really nice and easy. Next, we have the poppy dress. All right, the poppy dress is a loosely fitted wrap around dress. So back with the wrap with ties at the side seams. So it doesn't have a sash that wraps around your back. The bodice has drop sleeves that fall to the elbow. Very similar sleeve to what we just saw without the ruffle here. The skirt has two levels of tiered ruffles that start below the bust and then fall to just below the knee. <clears throat> here is that. Okay, so you can see here how different the wrap fits in this dress when you're kind of forced to tie it in one place. Like you don't have the luxury of tightening the wrap at all. It still has a very modest coverage. Um, but it is looser, as you can tell. Um, there's a little bit of gaping here, and it is a little bit lower and just a lot more ease. All right, so then you have your gathers. This does seem to be kind of at an angle. Is that just my mind playing tricks on me? Um, but that could just be due to how it's tied and it not being tied high enough, which... So maybe the, <clears throat> there's like a string on the end of this piece and then within, <coughs> excuse me, within the side seam of this panel that is this, this sleeve and down here, there's another little string. So maybe this one on here is too low and that's what's causing, I don't know. It's a little bit funky, right? It's a little bit cockeyed. Let's see how it is in other photos. Yeah, you can definitely see something happening in here, simply because she just can't tie it super tight, you know? There it is from the side. I love the side views. That looks good. The hem looks even. 
This looks even, even two. <laughs> I don't know. It also looks even, more even than it did in the other picture. <clears throat> Here's the back. That looks straight too. So maybe like in that first picture, it was just like, I don't know, sitting on her funny. And it, you know, when you make something out of a stripe or a plaid, it's going to accentuate that every single time. But yeah, very smockish, very comfortable. I, that's all I keep thinking is simple, comfortable, sleek, and chic. I'm, those are all the adjectives that I'm feeling from hubba -ding. Here's the lily top. <clears throat> Another wrap. Um, wide tie band that ties into a beautiful big bow. The sleeves are slightly flared and fall to just below the elbow. The top falls to the hip. Okay. So the bow ties at the waist, the top, uh, the hem is at the high hip. And again, because you're able to kind of like, you know, tie this tighter than it's supposed to be, you can see the difference on how this fits versus the last one that we looked at. <clears throat> Even though the design is no different. It's just all about how it's being tied. Super tight in the back. You know, she's really got it tied tight back there. So... That's the lily top. At a certain point, a lot of these are starting to look the same, um, inspired by each other with just very subtle details that are being swapped out and interchanged. So I can see myself getting like a couple of these, but then after a while being like, well, I kind of already have that. All right, this is Penelope. Um, it can be made as either a loose fitted top or an A-line dress. Both options have a high neckline framed by a ruffle, three-quarter length sleeves, and a loop and button closure at the back. So, set in sleeve. The first sleeve we've seen that's actually somewhat fitted, and then you just have your, like, straight A-line design on the, on the top, and then the skirt of the next one we'll see here in a second is just this extended. Um, and then you have this ruffle sewn in, and before you guys say... This is definitely going to look clownish. I encourage you to look around at some ready to wear because this is very, very, very trendy, very on point style wise. And depending on what your style is, I promise you can make it work for you. This is a super, super cute top that is right on trend. Um, I would stick with the sort of structured fabrics for the body, but explore a little bit with the ruffle fabric. Again, check out eyelet, check out lace, check out even things like fringe and, you know, stuff like that. You have the, the seam here and you have the opportunity to do some amazing things. And I think if you look around, um, <laughs> you will see more of this popping up than you realize. <laughs> Isn't that, I mean, I think that's adorable. A little navy A-line dress with this fun little detail. The little sheer sock and like loafery type shoe. I mean, perfect. Perfect styling. Yeah, the fit on this looks really great on her. The hems are even front to back. The sleeve looks like there's plenty of room and that, you know, you can really see how your arm kind of curves to the front when you look at these from the side and you know, it looks like the sleeve accommodates that beautifully. So cute. I would wear this in a heartbeat. <laughs> All right. I love Penelope. She might be my favorite so far. Um, Next, we have the Susie dress. Oh, Tell me you wouldn't live in this all summer long. The Susie dress is a Spanish vibe maxi dress with spaghetti straps and two layers of ruffles falling from the waist. The dress has a triangle neckline and falls to just above the ankle. I mean, simple, classic, chic. I, that's what I said before. I'm sticking to it. Um, cute little, basically spaghetti strap tank top here. Uh, this one falls to... I. If I'm picturing the rest of her photos correctly, um, maybe below, this may be closer to her low waist. Or I mean, sorry, her low hip. Uh, maybe somewhere between high and low hip. So if anything, you can also make this into a tank top, which is really nice. You just leave these things off. Knee length dress, leave the bottom tier off. 
I love the length of it. I love that it's not a maxi that goes to the ground. And sometimes those can feel really gownish, you know, dressier than they really are. This one is like, nope, I am here for easy breezy lifestyle and I look fantastic doing it. So good. Oh, love the back. I love that the strap is super, super long. <coughs> I would wear Susie all day long. Susie's my new favorite. <laughs> is that what we're going to do? Like every pattern is going to beat out the last one. Here's Deidre. Oh, stunner. Classic slip dress with a sassy little cowl neckline. The dress is cut on the bias, so it drapes beautifully. The shoulder straps tie up into bows at the shoulder. Beautiful little cowl here. Does it say cut on the bias? Yes, bias cut dress. Yes, 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 yes. All day long, a million times. I said this before. Even if you have every curve that's ever been known to man, if you make a bias cut dress, you will look the best you've ever looked. The way that fabric, when it's cut on the bias, hugs the body in all the right places and then stands away from the body in the places where you don't want it to hug, it's like magical. It is truly magical. If you ever made or worn, like purchased, a bias cut dress and you know what I'm talking about, leave some words of encouragement in the comment section, please. Let people know how phenomenal bias cut dresses are, no matter what figure body type you have. So, so, so good. So this one, again, I like how the straps that tie are really long. Normally you see those and they're just like little ditzy things that kind of fall just to blow your armpit, but these go way, 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 way down. <clears throat> Look how long those are. Super cute. So a higher back on this one, the front has that cowl, but this has like more of a high back, more like a bib in the back, I guess. This, the, so much of this showing is a little bit odd to me, but that's just me being very, very, very nitpicky. I don't think it's intended to be like a racer back. It's just, I don't know. It's cutting in <clears throat> really deep. <coughs> excuse me, and then the front is kind of like way, way, way too far back. So I wonder if it's the way it's being tied. You know, do you see what I mean? It's almost like the arm size being pulled to the back. Um, I don't really know how that would be happening other than, I mean, maybe it's drafted that way, but also maybe the ties are doing that. I'm trying, it's hard to say, it's hard to know for sure without like being there with the dress. Like if this were up higher with that, no, I think that must be the way it's drafted. So I would just check the shape of the arm side and make sure that there's enough in the back and not too much in the front. I think whenever you put your side seams together, you're going to see like a funky shaped arm side that's really flat up front and then really rounded in the back. So just check that if you were gonna make Deidre. <clears throat> All right, now we've got June. It would be fun if she added to this description a little bit and explained who each dress was named after, or I mean, maybe it's just like random names that she just, you know, she looks at the dress and she thinks that looks like a June, but if it's named after somebody, <laughs> it would be nice to know that too. The June dress is a loose fitting dress. The bodice crosses over at the front and the gathered skirt falls from just below the bust to mid shin. We've heard that a thousand times already right now, by now, right? The sleeves are slightly flared to fall just to below the elbow. This is that same, I mean, it looks a lot like, a lot like which one? This one just has a different sleeve and no pin tucks. It looks a lot like this one. Just no gathered tears. So you see what I mean? It kind of feels a little bit like we could combine the, these three patterns, you know, and just make it one, even if it's a little bit more expensive. Or you could just teach yourself, you know, how to make those alterations. You just start off with this bodice and then how to get the gathered sleeve, how to get the tears. <clears throat> and then you can kind of just hack it into the others. But 
Okay, so here we go. So we've got a little bit of a funky fabric, hard to see. Oh, what's going on here? But you can tell, again, this surplus bodice is very loose, very generous, and also very low um, on this one. If she had a fuller bust, I think you would be seeing a lot of cleavage. That's it. Um, yeah, I wish this were in a different, uh, different fabric. It's really hard to see just the dark fabrics. But... Yeah, it's just a matter of your personal style. You know, which sleeve do you like the best? The first one or this one? You know, the the gathered sleeve, statement sleeve, or this more basic one? And I also think it's interesting how, when you look at it from the front view, it looks very slim. And then you look at it from the side, and you can see that all of the fullness of the dress is sitting toward the front of the body. Do we like that? I think I like that. I think I'd like to look best looking straight on. <laughs> and then also you got to think about, well, that makes sense for people with bums or bellies because that's where you need the extra room. Then again, it could also just be the fabric that's pushing it this way. It has nothing to do with drafting. I don't know enough about drafting to say which, but you can see even here, it's laying flat on the sides and it's more full, standing further away from her back in the back. So just a little observation. Yeah, June is not my favorite. <clears throat> I much prefer... Well, Julia wasn't my favorite either. So I guess of the, of the wrappy type dresses, I really like Poppy the best. <clears throat> All right, now we've got Daphne. Daphne's a party. The Daphne dress has three tiers of ruffles that fall from below the bust or just above the knee. The long sleeves are gathered at the cuff to give a soft, billowy effect. So, lots and lots of tiers on Daphne. Cute. So cute. I love the tiers. You would think, looking at this, it's going to look like a little girl's dress. But it really doesn't. It does look very mature to me. I mean, from the side, it's a little bit... <laughs> a lot from the side but again I still think it's cute I still like it I love a ruffle if you don't know me I love a ruffle so it's going to be very very hard for me to not like strongly like almost any pattern that has a ruffle or a flounce it's just in my blood I just can't help it so yeah I like Daphne I like that it has the more like closer fitting sleeve toward the shoulder too, but you still get the fullness at the wrist. Daphne's a good one. Um, now we have Pippa. So again, we've got the same bodices and we're just swapping out little details. This one just happens to be the peplum and then you get the elasticated sleeve versus the one with the band. Um, this one is made out of a lighter fabric. You can see how much drapier those little ruffles are, laying much closer to her body. Yeah, I don't know about a whole wardrobe full of hubbarding garments, but I definitely think one or two, like, mixed in would be very, like... You would look at it and you would remember, oh, this is my hubba ding dress. Like, I remember this pattern design. Um, but once you start making a whole bunch of them, they all sort of start to look the same. Which I know I've said before. So now I'm starting to sound the same because all the patterns are starting to look the same. Are we like in some kind of twilight zone now? Are you here with me? <laughs> the Claire dress is a smock dress with a twist. The bodice has a rounded neckline and short sleeves. The gathered skirt falls from below the bust and it's shin and it's framed with a ruffle around the hem. We've heard it before, right? But again, like it just looks great. I mean, it looks really, really comfortable and really, really cute. There is something going on with the sleeve on this one. Like what is this happening here? A little bit of a twisting maybe? And then even here you can kind of see it. Looks great in the back. 
Again, maybe you're looking at all these and thinking every single one looks like a nightgown, but I'm thinking about my personal style and thinking about how I want things to evolve um, this year. And I'm thinking some styles like this might be exactly what I'm looking for. Comfort, um, polished, chic, you know, like I know I can find some you know, really wonderful fabrics that would really highlight some of these little design details. And I think it could look really, really expensive and one of a kind and just really, I mean, I, just really well done, I think. Um, because most of the designs are super basic, you could really focus on finishing, you could focus on fabrication, and have a couple of really, really great fun garments to mix in with your like more structured or, you know, tailored type of garments too. Okay, all that to say, the Georgina top is loosely fitted t-shirt style top with short sleeves and a cute little peplum around the hem. The, uh, the top falls to the hip. So same little top that we saw before. Where is, well, first of all, it's this. It's this with a peplum instead of a skirt. Um, but I was also thinking of, <coughs> well, that must have been it. Because I don't think it's, well, it's kind of like this without the little bib thing. So, but this is what it looks like on her. The little peplums are so cute. But again, I could buy a, one of her dress patterns that has this same neckline and sleeve shape and then just draft my own peplum. It's nothing special. It's literally a rectangle sewn into a gather, sewn onto the hem. But I think it adds a really cute detail. And it doesn't add a lot of width to your body either, like you would think. Maybe even looking at this, you might think, oh, that's gonna make my hips look so wide. But I think it's got, I mean, the length of it is perfection perfection. I might, might, might go an eensy teensy bit shorter, but because this top is basically falling right at the high hip, it doesn't make you look wider than you are. Um, it looks very intentional, which I really like. <clears throat> All right, getting close to the end here. We've got Audrey Coolots. We have a pant. We have a crotch. Um, which we haven't seen at all. So I love that she has this as part of her collection. This is the easiest pair of pants you'll ever make. The elasticated waist means there are no zippers or buttons involved and gives them a beautiful drape. The culottes sit on the waist and fall to just above the ankle. So for a lot of you, that is going to be a high-waisted pant. It is going to be at your waist. <clears throat> and here they are with the Georgina top that we just looked at. She made hers out of a more structured fabric. Obviously, um, you've seen culottes in a bunch of different fabrics. Uh, the lighter that they are, the closer that they fall to your body. And it looks like these literally are just no pockets, nothing. They are just pajama pants with a little bit of style, which I think we can all, <laughs> we can all get behind, right? Um, you can make them out of a gazillion different types of fabrics. And even though it's elasticated waist, <coughs> I don't, I don't think we should be mm, pigeonholed into lightweight drapey fabrics. I think we could do something like this and accentuate how wide leg they are. I think that's really fun. All right, so that is hubbading. I think you have a pretty good idea of my thoughts and feelings toward. Um, this collection of patterns, like I said, I think I'm going to end up getting one of her like rounded neckline dresses and then using that to hack into other versions with different tiers and stuff like that. Even maybe getting this button front one. Um, and then, you know, you can eliminate the button placket pretty easily. I don't know. There's a bunch of different sleeve options here too. So I'd have to look through, but definitely love the Penelope. Love the Susie. <clears throat> love Deidre. <laughs> There's a lot of good ones in here. A lot of good ones. So let me know. Oh, and then she offers a free pocket pattern if you want to add side seam pockets to anything. Um, but I have a tutorial on my channel that will teach you how to draft your own for free that gets sewn into the, to the, um, 
waist seam. I wonder if hers does. Let's see if it's teardrop or otherwise. It doesn't say. Um, yeah, it doesn't say. So I will um, add Hubba Ding one or two patterns to my collection. Maybe add it to the Sew Together 22 when we come to dresses or woven tops. Um, since they are less than our $12. Um, this is a completely different dress. This dress is not on her website. Here I thought we were done, but we are not. So this one has this little V that I love. Same sleeve, but a V-neck with V gathers. Look how great that I love this one. Like love, love. Um, <clears throat> this one we saw, this one we saw, saw it, saw it, saw it, saw it, I think. Isabella, yep, saw that one. Um, this one is Claire. We saw Claire, we saw Deidre, we saw Bethany, yep. Poppy, we saw Edie, Daphne, Lily, Pippa. Georgina, June, Susie, Penelope. Okay, so this is the only one that's on Etsy and not on her website. But I love it. This is my absolute favorite out of all of them. And it falls at, at comes in at $8.23. So can't really beat that. So there you have it. Hubba ding. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you willing to give these uh, one of these patterns a try? Is this silhouette something you can see yourself in this year? Is it a silhouette you've loved for a long time or something you're just thinking about getting into? Let me know in the comments. Let's discuss. I love reading your thoughts. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.